air wedge lab. This is an opportunity to use something very simple, a thin film of air, to actually make some measurements of very small objects. To do this lab, we need two fairly thick and flat plates of uh, glass and a source of monochromatic light. Um, the way you would probably preferably want to do this is with a light source like this one, which puts out uh, green light at um, a known wavelength, 540 nanometers. This is, in fact, an inspection lamp for this purpose. Not having that kind of light available, uh, we're going to make a substitute using a helium neon laser. And the way we'll do that is by diffusing the beam in some way, spreading it out. Uh, we could do that using a, um, a curved mirror or um, uh, some kind of an arrangement of a, a, a microscope objective to spread the beam and then another mirror to tilt it down onto the glass plate. But it turns out that a fairly simple way to do it is to just take a mirror and wrap it in wax paper. It's, uh, the wax paper is thin enough, translucent uh, enough so that the mirror is still reflective but it also spreads the beam or diffuses it as it reflects and gives a nice wide patch of monochromatic light. First thing we have to do is to clean the glass plates because uh, any chunks of dust in there are going to um, distort the film. So we use uh, lint-free wipes and uh, isopropyl alcohol and just wipe the plates, both of the sides that are going to come in contact with each other. To form the wedge, uh, the lab first specifies that a wedge uh, be formed with a piece of material of known thickness. If the thickness gets much more than 70, 80 microns, the wedge angle will be so wide that the fringes, that's obviously an exaggeration, but the fringes will be very, very, very closely spaced. It will be too difficult to see them and count them. So uh, what's turned out to be very handy is a piece of trash bag. And if you go to the local supermarket, you'll see that um, the cheaper varieties of trash bag are on the order of um, 25, 30 micron thickness, which is just about what you need. They're also stamped with the thickness so that uh, that becomes your known. So what we do to make the wedge is um, simply put the, the trash bag at one end of the plate, put the two clean pieces of plate together, and then use a rubber band to hold them in place. You can use one at each end. The, the fringes are not evenly spaced because these aren't expensive flat glass plates. Um, so what we generally do is have students measure um, or count how many fringes there are at several sections and then find an average. Sometimes you have to try one side of the plate and the, or another side of the plate. You have to find the combination that gives the straightest and flattest fringes. Um, it's not easy. The um, help, the addition of a, um, a, a lens for magnifying the fringes sometimes helps. We've also discovered that uh, other forms of illumination, while not monochromatic, give a really good fin fringe pattern. This is um, it being illuminated by an energy-saving fluorescent light bulb. And uh, although the, there's uh, many colored bands instead of a single uh, red band followed by a dark band, uh, because you may have measured the wavelengths of this energy-saving fluorescent, you might be able to pick out one of the colors and count those fringes and then know the wavelength from an earlier lab experiment. You can also try illuminating the fringes with other sources of light. For example, this is an energy-saving fluorescent light bulb. And you can see that rather than um, single color fringes, we have uh, rainbow fringes forming. If you've previously measured the wavelengths of the uh, colors in this energy-saving light bulb, you could pick one of those colors and use that in order to calculate the, uh, the thickness of the whatever's making the wedge. Um, in fact, the wavelengths differ so little over the visible range, you'll get pretty good results if you just pick uh, 550 nanometers for green and then just count the centers of the fringes.